each state survives the change of Hamiltonian And the answer is actually easy. So this is spin up. So this is degenerate at zero period, well, as, as long as there is time reversal. And uh, even if you change the Hamiltonian, as, you, as long as you keep the time reversal, this degeneracy due to spin one half survives. That's nothing but Kramer's degeneracy. So in that sense, uh, each state of AKLT model survives under time reversal until you cross the phase transition. So in that sense, again, the uh, presence of each state is protected by time reversal. So again, time reversal can work as a symmetry which protects for the phase. So this argument, you don't even need to know non-local transformation or whatever. You just have single one spin up. So this is maybe sim even simpler version of standard argument of uh, stability of edge state in topological initiator. But this is probably even simpler, but somehow nobody asked that question in earlier times. So, but then we did find another symmetry that is that is inversion symmetry, which is kind of completely new uh, symmetry, which protects Fourier phase as distinct HPT phase. Uh, I mean, new in the sense that uh, we didn't have any precursor of this in back in early nineties. But uh, this is the third symmetry, which protects Fourier phase as a distinct phase. But uh, I'm not going into this. Okay. So. Um, I, I want to briefly mention. So in my paper, I said that I generalized Kennedy and Tasaki's idea to general integer half spin. And uh, okay, that generalization is kind of straightforward using this uh, expression. But what surprised me was that uh, this hidden symmetry is unbroken in uh, uh, okay <coughs> broken in spin one AKLT state, which was uh, discovered by Tasaki, uh, Kennedy and Tasaki. But uh, the situation was the same for odd integer spin, one, three, five, seven. But when I calculated for even integer spins, like two, four, six, eight, uh, this hidden symmetry was unbroken. So from this respect, the spin two AKLT state looks trivial. Um, so as I said, so spin two AKLT state can be written, uh, can be drawn like this picture. And uh, I did some calculation and found that uh, I can define hidden discrete symmetry, Z2 gross, Z2 symmetry, even for spin 2. But that hidden symmetry is unbroken in spin 2 case. And back in 92, I wasn't sure what it means. So one possibility was, of course, this just means that the spin 2 AKLT state is trivial. That's logically possible, but at that time, I couldn't believe that. And probably many people also didn't believe that. So I was suspecting, probably there is maybe higher hidden symmetry, which we still didn't discover. But uh, there must be something which can characterize this in a similar manner to the spin map. And again, I left this problem, and uh, I think Nobody tried to answer this problem until 2009. But actually, once you think about this, the answer is simple. So, H state for spin 2. Okay. So, in spin 2 AKT state, each end has spin 1 because uh, you have two uh, free spin 1 half, but you apply this symmetrization filter, so two free spin 1 halves are combined into spin 1. So, you have spin 1 H. And then AKLT state, AKLT Hamiltonian is very special. So in order to consider realistic Hamiltonian, you need to introduce some perturbation. And the question is whether this H state survives in the presence of perturbation. And the answer is this spin one H state has no Kramer's degeneracy. So it has degeneracy for AKLT model. But if you perturb this with general Hamiltonian, then then uh, this is not really <coughs> correct. So in this sense, uh, spin two AKLT state or a coden phase is essentially indistinguishable from the trivial state, probably state. In that sense, even though spin one coden phase is a uh, symmetry protected topological phase, spin two coden phase is not SPT phase, it's trivial phase. That's 
the conclusion we arrived in 2009 couldn't possibly back in 19. But if I were clever enough from my calculation result for the absence of hidden symmetry breaking in skin to AKP state, I could predict, I could have uh, predicted this in principle, but I wasn't wise enough. So uh, our conclusion is that, uh, as I said, spin to Hoden state looks very non-trivial, but in fact can be adiabatically connected to a trivial state, even if you impose the same set of symmetry. And in fact, in our paper, we found some exactly solvable model which connects spin to a KFT state to a trivial state, which is exact, but Hamiltonian is very complicated, so I wouldn't even try to show the Hamiltonian here. But after our paper, there are some numerical calculations, for example, by Japanese people, Tonegawa, Professor Tonegawa and company. They did study phase diagram in uh, spin two Heisenberg chain with some anisotropy D. D is the same, D S D square. Sorry, I didn't write the uh, definition of delta, but this is uh, exchange anisotropy. But indeed, in this phase diagram, so, okay, so original Holden state is here. So this is a standard Heisenberg Heisenberg chain for spin two. And there is very narrow region of Holden phase. But if you follow this region of Holden phase, eventually it's smoothly connected to this large D limit, D infinity limit. So there may be still some subtlety about this numeric, but, but uh, I think this conclusion is not in large limit. So this is also confirming the limit. So I'm So uh, yeah, I think I made up physics points enough. So let me try to draw some lessons from my personal experience. Um, yeah, first is I emphasize. So we almost discovered this PT phase back in 90, early 90s, but somehow we couldn't. So uh, it's important to ask. Maybe stupid sounding, but simple, but important question. I'll try to answer. That's very important. Um, I think some part of this SPT phase business we could easy, easily discover back in the 90s if we had to try, but we did. And of course, you could say that's because I'm I was stupid, and I am. But it was not just me. It was people like Hoden, Aprek, Sasaki, and all those smart people working on this program at that time. But still, we managed to miss. So even smart people can miss something. You might discover something which is missed by whatever great video. And uh, last part I couldn't explain very well, but uh, of course I learned many from my seniors, but uh, in the latter part of my part, my work, I learned a lot from uh, Frank, Erez, and Ari, and also from my <coughs> students, which I couldn't explain. But, you know, automatically every year you get old, so whatever you do to make for uh, working in company, the number of younger people increases monotonically. And uh, it's important to learn from young people. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. So we thank uh, Masaki for a very nice talk about a very difficult um, subject and also for these very nice lessons. Um, so we have some questions. How, how is your discussion today uh, relevant for final temperature? Ah, that's a good question. So here I just focused on uh, uh, zero temperature. So I don't think this, especially in 1D, is robust against any finite temperature. So maybe in higher dimension, uh, situation is different. But in 1D, for example, as long as this hidden symmetry argument works, in a uh, transformed world, it's just a uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking of discrete symmetry. That's orderly, conventional order after transformation. And uh, this conventional order in 1D is unstable against finite temperature. So I suppose at least in 1D should be fragile in finite temperature. So, so that's what the question is. Uh, 
further study of this issue of? Um, well, of course, any VR experiment is done at finite temperature, but if you have a system with gap, then if your temperature is low enough compared to gap, then yeah. you can... Effectively, it could still be... Yeah. And also, length factor. Okay. So the, the, the study of crossover is important. And on the other hand, if you go to higher dimension, it's probably more stable, can be stable against temperature. But I cannot say anything precise. This kind of fluid person only appears in the spin systems or uh, which kind? Uh, uh, topologically uh, protective. No, uh, well, as I said, so this topological insulators, uh, kind of electron system, which is uh, at least one characteristic example of SPT phase. Yes. Although, um, okay, so electron system are fermionic. And other than permeate system, you can maybe write anything in terms of spin variable. So if you have bosons, you can basically represent bosons in terms of spins and vice versa. So in that sense, uh, you can write down either spin system or uh, some system of fermions. It may have application in quantum fields, even in two dimensions. Sorry, in quantum fields. Yeah, so in 2D, yes, um, it's less controlled compared to 1D. So in 1D, there's quantum field theory, which is pretty powerful and universal. But in 2 plus 1D, the, 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 in higher dimension, we can still use field theory, and there are many nice applications. But the uh, problem is that uh, we don't have <coughs> so much control over many possible quantum field theories. So in many problems, we can do rather little. But in some cases, yeah, we, we know some nice applications. Okay. So I understand you correctly that the uh, SPD state mm -hmm. cannot be deformed diabetically to a trivial state because they have different symmetries? Well, uh, OK, so maybe it depends on how you define the symmetry. The symmetry of the Hamiltonian is the same. But uh, in very rough term, uh, the symmetry of the states is different. And uh, that's distinction. For example, uh, I can say this Hoden state uh, has, in some sense, is odd under time reversal. But that needs caution. But, uh, because you have h spin one half, and a single spin one half is odd under time reversal. And that distinguishes from trivial state. Then, then how do you determine the, uh, the symmetry of the uh, trivial state? For example, could you find another trivial state that has actually the same symmetry as the SPD state? Um, uh, I think it depends on uh, the type of symmetry you consider. For example, if you consider time reversal, then if you define trivial state as just a really product state of local state, product of local state. Then, uh, for example, if you consider spin one system, each spin state is automatically time reversal even. So there cannot be any time <coughs> reversal hold state. In that sense, trivial state must belong to different phase yeah. from holding phase. But uh, precisely speaking, it depends on what kind of symmetry you are talking about. In many cases, uh, I think I can show that the uh, trivial state must belong to the different, uh, different symmetry, or uh, has different symmetry from the topological SPD theory. Other questions? Um, so, can you talk about, are, are you going to, do you have slides for this uh, different trivial phases? Center 
Yeah, with the shift, yeah. So if you put a disamidonian, then disamidonian is invariant and the uh, combined operation of inversion, lattice inversion about particular site and rotation of spins about high rotation of spins about the axis. And this Hamiltonian is invariant under this simulation. And in that case, uh, if you set <coughs> this D to infinity, you have this familiar large state. And if you send this star at U to infinity, you have this nail state. And both are completely trivial in the sense they are product state, but still they are different. Since you talk about history of this subject, since when these people began to realize that the study of the edge state in the speed chain model are uh, interesting and important uh, problems? Um, yeah, okay. So, when exactly speaking, when this started, I was just uh, finishing undergraduate or something, so I don't. Uh, have exact knowledge, but uh, I think there is a key paper by Kennedy in 1990. Um, yeah, so I didn't give explicit reference, but uh, there is a paper by Kennedy in 1990. So this AKMT paper was published in 86, 87. And uh, I'm not sure if people realize about it. This is unrelated to the uh, realization of the importance of edge states in the Hall effect, quantum Hall effect, right? Come well, up. okay, so maybe. Or they are. Mm, uh, okay, so at that time, the edge state of quantum four states were already recognized. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, perhaps this is uh, recognized in another. So, actually, the name edge state, I'm not sure if it's the best name because it's end of one dimension. <laughs> so, maybe it should be better called end state or. But uh, it has the name edge state precisely because of analogy to quantum state. Yeah. So so yeah. So okay, this was the, uh, by 2005 after the. Uh, no, the, uh, I mean uh, at that time quantum hall, original quantum hall was already. I, known. I, I I think I'm slightly older, but maybe my my offer a, a comment whether you think <coughs> the discussion on poly acetylene actually actually earlier than this one. Okay. So one notion about the topological order is uh, topological degeneracy. So does those uh, identified transformation depend on the boundary condition? Uh, I mean, between the topological phase to the trivial phase? Yeah, so um, I think this uh, ground state degeneracy, topological degeneracy is a feature of this topologically ordered phase, uh, not SPT. So SPT doesn't, generally does not have this topological degeneracy. And that, that is precisely related to the robustness of these phases against uh, breaking of symmetry. So if you have the gen okay, so it may be still related to symmetry. Okay. Um, so in topologically ordered phase, you have uh, the gen ground state, which are um, not connected by any local order parameter. So they are stable even if you break any symmetry. But uh, there can be ground state degeneracy in conventionally Conventional spontaneous symmetry breaking phase. That's easy because uh, you have up spin ground state, down spin ground state, they are degenerate in some way. Maybe. But those can be lifted by breaking symmetry. So that corresponds to conventional SSP. But in case of uh, uh, symmetry protected topological phases, there is, there is no degeneracy. So that's one distinguishing factor between genuine topological order. Question? Okay, I'll use my power to share <laughs> to ask the last question. So, um, so, so this later part, you, we learned a lot from from this matrix product uh, yeah. day representation of this uh, AKLT type yeah. of space. And so, to generalize it to higher dimension, is there mm -hmm. any way that we can borrow from this tensor product state? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's I want to think about. It. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So 
let's uh, thank uh, Professor Oshkar again for a very nice